Well, welcome to another episode, this one of getting to know your neighbor's business. Uh, as I said before, typically your neighbor doesn't want you to get up all in their business, right? Well, these neighbors do. These neighbors have a business in Lagodi, and they want you to know all about it. And that's what we're going to do today. The business that we're spotlighting today is Harvest Health and Rehab. And the co-owners right here, this dynamic duo right here, is Aaron Birch Burns and her brother, Stephen Birch. But before we talk about Harvest Health and Rehab, uh, let's get caught up a little bit. Aaron, uh, both are Lagodi graduates, and uh, Aaron, uh, are you at the point where you don't want to tell the class that you graduated the year? Or are you okay with that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, 2005. All right. And what about you, Stephen? 2003. 2003? I didn't know you were just two years apart. Aaron seems so much more mature, <laughs> but that's beside the point. So let's uh, talk about your, your family a little bit. By the way, Stephen and Aaron are from the greatest people God ever put on this earth, I swear to you, Rita and Martin Birch. And, uh, but they have families of their own, so they made those young crazy rascals grandparents, believe it or not. Yeah. So Aaron, tell us a little bit about your family. Um, we have a six-year-old boy, Isaac, and a four-year-old daughter, Nora. And right now we're currently hosting an exchange student from Japan, and her name is Yuzuka, and she's 17, and so she's with the junior class at high school. So um, this year has kind of been interesting because we've been thrown into the high school world and um, jumping from first grade to junior is a, <laughs> a little bit of a leap and had some unknowns and um, just kind of working through that. But it's been super fun to have her. Well, let's get off topic a little bit here then because I do want to ask you real quick because you're busy, busy, busy right now. Yeah. Why did you feel like it was important to host a foreign exchange student at this time of your life? Um, <laughs> well, it wasn't something that we were necessarily seeking out to do, um, but I had been contacted repeatedly um, just saying, hey, I think you guys would be great, a great fit, and it's something that Tyler and I really wanted to do in the future, and we had kind of like prepped our house for it. Um, we want to expose our kids to a lot of culture, and um, we thought this was a great way to do that. So. And we didn't know that we were necessarily ready this year, um, but it, it came to where um, we really didn't want any students to miss out on this opportunity. Um, so we just kind of jumped all in and said, yes, like, let's do it. And um, it has just been an amazing experience. So it's, it's so wonderful. She's um, just an amazing, smart, beautiful person. She's a great fit with our family. My kids are crazy about her. Um, and they're now running around the house just um, spewing um, Japanese words and phrases um, that's like second nature. So um, my, I was in the garage the other morning and I was getting ready to get in my car and we have spiders this time of year. Like in our, and so there's one on the floor. And without missing a beat, my six-year-old goes, Mom, yamate, which means stop. He wanted me to stop before I stepped on that spider. And, he, and like, I mean, it's just natural for him now. So um, it's been really cool to see them kind of embrace our culture and um, just expose them to different things and um, around the world. And, help and what's her name? Yuzuka. Yuzuka. So I just did one of these with a foreign exchange student here, uh, Tom Denier. So you think Azuka would sit down with me? <laughs> I know, I know. It, it, it's tough, it's tough. I know the language barrier sometimes can be a little bit difficult as well, and, and uh, my Japanese isn't as good as it used to be. <laughs> so, all right, very good. So, and your husband, Tyler? Yes, yeah, so um, Tyler used to be full-time at Indiana State University. So now he is um, just an adjunct professor and he teaches some online classes for them. And he also teaches some criminal justice courses at Lagodi High School for the kids to have an opportunity to gain some college credit. Um, but he is full-time now with Harvest Health and Rehab. So, um, you know, we call him our problem solver. He's our go-to person for anything that shows up. And so it's really fun having him here all the time now. Yeah, and, and your major, where did you go to college? Indiana State University. And your major was? Speech pathology. Speech pathology. Mm -hmm. And Tyler also went to Indiana State, right? And his major was? Criminal justice. Yeah, so I'm walking out, I'm driving back out of the school, to go to high school one day, and I, I see Tyler coming out of there. Tyler, what, what are you doing here? Well, I teach a couple of criminal justice classes. What? <laughs> so these are things I don't know about, and, and Brian Harmon said we, we do so many things that people don't know about. So we're going to... We're going to dig into that one of these days, too. But yeah. uh, 
Well, so speech pathologist, so that makes sense. Stephen, you're in Owensboro, Kentucky. Yes. Your family consists of what? We got three kids. Um, I got a six-year-old girl, uh, Clara, and uh, soon to be four-year-old uh, girl, Cameron. And then I've got uh, a baby in the house as well. We've got a eight-month-old baby boy, uh, Chase. So we've got three kids, my wife, Elizabeth. Um, I think we've been married eight years now. Um, we've been in Owensboro ever since. Pretty much I got out of college. Uh, college was where? University of Evansville? University of Evansville, yeah. yes. Okay. Her as well? Uh, no, no. She was from Owensboro. Uh, she went to college in Kentucky. And so we met after I moved to, to Owensboro. Okay. So your major was what? Mechanical engineering. Mechanical engineering. Okay, this one makes sense. Uh, these two, by the way, if we haven't mentioned, co-own. Um, Stephen is quite the businessman. You know, maybe we'll get into that a little bit later. But we do want to focus on on a Harvest Health. So, Aaron, if I ask you the question, I'm not from here. I've never heard of it, but I see it online or whatever. What in the world is Harvest Health and Rehab? How would you best describe it? Well, we're a group that focuses on outpatient therapy and we specialize in three disciplines. So we do physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy. Um, something unique about us is we do all ages. So we do from birth to as old as they come in the door. Um, but you know, when you're talking about physical therapy, most people have heard about that before, about recovering from some injury. Um, but some of the unique things that they don't realize that physical therapy can treat is migraines and headaches. You know, we um, do dry needling to treat like sinus issues or TMJ, um, but you know, everything from back pain to um, joint replacements to any type of surgical recovery, um, strained muscles, pulled muscles, especially for our athletes here. Um, and then for speech therapy, you know, a lot of people um, naturally say when I'm a, oh, I'm a speech therapist, oh, you, you teach people how to talk. And I'm like, well, not exactly. So, um, you know, we work a lot with infant, like feeding and swallowing. So any kids who come home from the hospital who are on trachs or come home with feeding tubes, we work on that. Um, obviously, speech and language development, um, stuttering. But for our older population, um, you know, we work on cognitive recovery from stroke. Um, we've actually had a lot of cognitive um, recoveries from COVID lately, like people having um, some impairments following that after they've been diagnosed um, traumatic brain injuries. We've had some young workman's comp in there, cognitive issues um, following some work injuries, like falling and concussions. Um, but we do voice therapy for Parkinson's, um, swallowing, you know, following strokes, anything like that. Um, and then as far as occupational therapy, because we treat all ages, it is kind of like a wide range of things. But for our younger kids, we're looking at um, like fine motor development, um, you know, any sensory issues they have, emotional regulation, um, handwriting. And then when you get older, um, basically anything from like the shoulder down. So any like tennis elbow, any um, surgeries that you have on your hand or fingers or wrist, um, elbow, they help you recover from. And then they focus on um, like activities of daily living. So can you shower yourself? You know, can you toilet yourself? Can you dress yourself? Do you have enough range of motion and strength to be able to do those, you know, to go home, to be safe? Um, so we do a lot in our clinic, um, but, you know, it's only three specialties, but within those three is just such a wide range of um, things that we can treat and help people with. Yeah, that's amazing. What's more amazing is that, that is in our hometown. I mean, whoever thought that something like this, and I want to get into that because that had to be a, a major consideration when you when you talked about opening the business, will this go in Lagodi? But before we do that, I do want to ask, so what areas do you reach out to? Because there's not a lot of these facilities in the immediate area. So what areas do you see people coming in from for help? Um, mostly our surrounding counties. So we have um, two locations, so one in Lagodi and one in Bedford. So for Lagodi, you know, we're seeing people come from Shoals, Montgomery, Odin, Washington, Jasper, um, primarily for Lagodi. And then for Bedford, it's um, sometimes Shoals, Bedford, um, Bloomington, and then just some of their surrounding counties as well. 
So the idea, the concept, um, well, I'm sorry, before you even get to that, I want to get back to you again, Aaron, for a little bit. So after college, you graduated in uh, speech therapy. From there, what did you do? Because I know you weren't in Lagodi immediately. No. So I spent a few years in a skilled nursing facility, and then I also um, did a few years doing home health services where I worked primarily with geriatrics, but driving all around Indianapolis and covering the surrounding areas. So going into people's homes, going into assisted living, um, and that, that's what I did until I moved back here. <laughs> so what was there a burning desire to get back here, or was it just an opportunity? Um, yeah, so we had this idea going, um, uh, you know, about Stephen had kind of heard me complain, hey, I absolutely love what I'm doing, um, but if I had my own company, I'd be doing some things differently. <laughs> um, and I think for me, some of those final straws is, you know, when you're asked to do some unethical things or think, you know, it's got to be better than this. This is not how healthcare should be. And so... Um, that's kind of one of the things that started us thinking about, well, if we had this, how would we do it, right? And how would we make this better for our patients? And um, so that's kind of what got the ball rolling. So so the ball rolling because Stephen heard you complaining a little bit. <laughs> and and Stephen, kind of take it, take, take it from there. So you heard that, and your, your thoughts were to Aaron, what? Well, I had just finished up getting my uh, master's in business administration and was looking to, to start some sort of business and didn't know exactly what and uh, we she she was also getting several awards around the Indianapolis area for her services because uh, she was so good at what she'd done okay. and I thought you know around rural areas you really don't have the access to this type of health care and we really wanted to focus on our hometown first and foremost and thought it would be a potential opportunity to to build something, you know, to, to provide a good service to the community. Okay. So so that's that's kind of the conception of the idea, but a, a lot of things had to happen before it became in effect. So um, talk about that a little bit. How, how did you put that dream, that thought into reality the first time? First several steps where you thought, yeah, we can do this. Well, we spent about two years, really. Um, we first thought about it. Actually, we were at uh, Aaron and Tyler's house for Tyler's birthday in August of 2014, I think it was. And uh, a lot of his friends are in business-type fields, marketing, sales, business-type stuff. And um, that's when I first floated the idea that we should do this. And so over a few beverages that evening, and uh, we all spent probably three hours, you know, going through different scenarios. Oh, what we I wish do. we had video. Yeah, this. yeah, it was it was pretty funny. <laughs> but uh, after a slight headache in the morning, we yeah. got up and uh, we still thought it was a good idea. So <laughs> that's, um, that's the test. Yeah. yeah. And so then, let's see, I got, they were already married. I got married that September. So the following month I got married and um, got back from our honeymoon. And I told my new wife that I was going to quit my job. I was a maintenance manager at uh, a utility company for a power plant. Okay, you, you told facility. her, you didn't ask her. Well. <laughs> it was a mutual, yeah, it was a mutual decision. She, okay. uh, she was very supportive. Okay. Um, and, and I'm sorry, you were, what position were your maintenance manager where? At uh, Owensboro Municipal Utilities. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I had been there for I don't know, eight years probably at okay. the time. Tough decision. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, so she was supportive. We we did that and um, started learning. I actually went trying to sell uh, Medicare supplement insurance to learn about Medicare mm -hmm. insurances yeah. because that was the probably the biggest thing we didn't know. We knew how the provide good therapy services, but we didn't have any clue about the back end of the business, yeah. you know, because most of your revenue is from insurance companies. And so I really studied that, learned. Um, I didn't actually stay in that field for very long. I mean, it was only uh, maybe a few months uh, because another company kept hounding me to come work for them. But uh, I was able to learn enough to get started and uh, we spent basically the next two years developing the plan, how we were going to do things. Um, 
I'm not saying it was perfect. It wasn't. But so, so, so in those two years, you were employed by who? Um, uh, I ended up going to work for Century Aluminum, which I currently actually still work for. Okay. So, so you, um, you were working, so you had this idea, and yeah. you were working it while you were employed. Yeah, I was basically trying to, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't want to go into debt at mm -hmm. the time, and right. so I was raising the funds to, to basically support it. She was basically, you know, trying to, to save up enough to move back to, to take a, a, you know, yeah, and you, definitely you, not you very much. Me. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's a lot. Like, when you, when you think about doing this, it's like, okay, well, we're going to, uh, you know, I'm going to move back and we're going to hit the ground running, but understanding you're probably not going to get a paycheck for a year. So there's a lot of preparation in that, a lot of saving. Um, and so just making sure, again, that we're setting ourselves up for success. And, and your husband was supportive, I take it, as well? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this was your first business venture? Yes. All right. And you've had a few... You, you you own and run the uh, car wash here in yes. Ligoti now. Uh, what other businesses are you do you have an interest in? Um, right now we have I have uh, also three operating car washes in, in Owensboro that I'm partnering in, okay. and then um, we got a new one under construction that should be opening in January. When you're growing and you're growing for yeah. sure. So all right, so the concept. Uh, becomes reality. You're saying this is it. it. It's going to happen. It's going to happen in Ligoti. What challenges did you have from there to get it up and started? Um, I think just, you know, in, in this area, um, especially to start when nobody knows about you, most of your referrals are coming from physicians, right? So um, basically I'm looking up all the doctors and all the specialties and um, begging them to see me for lunch, right? <laughs> and I'm I'm a nobody. They've never heard of me. They're like, we are too busy for you. And I'm like, please let me in, you know. So um, Jonathan Crop, I think, always tells the story about he's like, you came in and you were so timid, you were so nervous, like, please send me some patients. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I promise we'll take really good care of them, you know. So at the time, you know, we had a staff of three, you know. I was the front office person, I was the back office person, I was the speech therapist, and then we had an OT and a PT. So there were three of us. Um, and so really just the challenge was getting our name out, right? And just having patience to come through that door, to have that experience. Because I know once they get there, I can control the experience they have and they're going to love it. But just, you know, getting that, that revenue, that, um, kind of volume to start happening was the challenge right off the bat. Well, what about even before that, uh, the site, the building? Um, and I can't recall, what, what year are we talking? 2016. Yeah, November of 2016 we started. And we actually, uh, it was when uh, Hawkins Health uh, Care, they, J Jordan Brook, they just bought that uh, the old Pamida building, right. and so they they were finishing up the construction of their uh, their new uh, building, and mm -hmm. so we actually started in their building. We had three rooms we leased off of them, okay. for, so one little small section of that building for yeah. the first what close to two years, yeah. Okay, so the building that's there now um, was there anything there? I'm trying to remember. Was is that a complete build? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was. So you had to buy the property. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> we, don't, we don't need to get into the. Yeah, no, we, I'm sure we actually, that uh, at, that, at that time, we actually, uh, Stuart Blake helped support us. He owned the property. He did. Okay. And um, uh, was he a, had tore down a couple of houses, or the right. house and the pole barn or yep. something. I yep. can't remember. It was yep, a couple of I remember months. exactly. I remember exactly. So um, we, uh, we went to him and said, hey, we want this lot and knew he had several other properties and asked mm -hmm. him just because we were still a young company um asked him to, to build it we would lease it off from him and buy him later so we, we since have, have bought the building but okay um we yeah that's how it got started so we did that in 2018. yeah so aaron what about Stephen had talked about um trying to learn the back office and the insurance in particular which is in incredibly yeah so how did you get by that beast how did you learn that or yeah just tell me that story well i'm not sure if you know this but insurance companies are not incredibly helpful <laughs> so, 
So um, a lot of trial and error, to be honest with you, and um, tons of hours on the phone, online, um, just even just getting credentialed, like with insurances as a company, and then getting each therapist credentialed with them so we can um, actually get money, get paid for the services that we're providing. So for a while, we were providing free services, which is never fun. Um, but it was it was a learning experience. Um, it's something I can do in my sleep now. Uh, so, so you handle it yourself for the most part. Yeah. You don't have somebody there that's an insurance. No, we expert. do. Yeah. You do have somebody yeah. there. Yeah. But you had to learn it to begin. beginning. Yes. So uh, typically I handle um, like all the credentialing. So anyone new coming in, like every new provider has to be credentialed with the insurances. But um, we are really blessed to have a couple of back office and people helping us out with all the billing and stuff now. Mm -hmm. You know, I think of that's the most beautiful smile you ever see in your life, by the way. Always has been. But that beautiful smile, when you see it, there's so much more that goes on, right, than, than just the smiling. There's, like you said, hours and hours of just learning and tinkering and, and, and perfecting, I guess, if you will. But another challenge had to have been, all right, so, so you come to Lagoni, you got to get staff. You got to get people who know what they're doing and have to be uh, customer service. How much of a challenge was that? Um, it's not so much of a challenge now that um, you know we are um, steady and consistent. But in the beginning, it's really hard one just to find specialized therapists. You know, having a physical therapist or an OT or an SLP, it's a very specialized degree, um, and there's not that large of a pool in this area to choose from. But also, when you do find somebody, when you're brand new like that and you're trying to convince them to leave a steady job, right? And they're like, we don't know if you guys are gonna make it. You know, I think that was the biggest concern is just getting people to jump on board and um, believe in our dream and, and just be ready to ride that ride. But um, even when you find someone who's like, yes, like I totally wanna do this, you know, think about if you went to your spouse and you know, you guys are young, you have a new, a new family and you're trying to tell her you want to quit your steady job with guaranteed income, right? And you're gonna go work for someone who's been open for two months, right? And you don't know if they're going to make it or if they're gonna be closing their doors in six months. So that was the biggest challenge is getting is getting people to um, believe and take that risk. And that's really what it was. It was a big risk, um, but for but it paid off for them. You know, and, and I would assume that even now, even after what, six years, you're at the point where you have people graduating high school that know what they want to do mm -hmm. in hopes of maybe coming to a place like yours. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Which is a lot different than six years ago. Yeah, we've actually, I mean, because it's so hard to find therapists in this area, we, we've reached out to basically all the regional um, universities that offer the degrees and, and we, um, we house their students and then we also are partnering with the the local schools to do internships with students that have some interest in, in therapy and going forward. So it's really a long-term play um, to try to get more people interested in the field because it's definitely a need in the area. Mm -hmm. um, currently we have a couple of therapists that are driving an hour to our site because yeah, there's just not, they live. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's not ideal for them either, but uh, you know, they like it. They like the, they like us, they like the, the job and, so they're willing to do that, at least for now. So. so was there a point, I know there was, where you wondered if you did the right thing? If, if, if you said, what did I get myself into? And even, even from co-owner co of the business, what you had invested, was there a point when you wondered if this was going to work? Did I do the right thing? No. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no. That's great. That's great. It took us about three years, really, to to fully understand the business and learn how to be efficient. Um, but during that time, we were still we were able to make it. We had planned accordingly. Um, you know, didn't have to go and try to borrow any money to do it. So uh, there was never a point financially where we had to do it because we were always willing to put more money into it if we needed to because we thought it could definitely be something down the line. Yeah, Aaron, from the business standpoint, um, how would you describe your business skills? Are you obviously it's grown because because you're you've grown in that regard, but 
do you do much in regards to the business side of it, the finance side of it? Yes. Yeah. So I handle um, all of our accounting. So um, basically, I do all the outgoing billing. So all the outgoing claims um, I handle and I handle the credentialing. Um, and then I also help them input, you know, once we hear back from the claims, like money and stuff. So um, I help train my team and guide them knowing like what codes to bill, what's reimbursable, um, you know, just kind of coach them to um, maximize like their time with their patients. Um, and then I do all of our monthly like um, reconcil reconciliation and um, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. So, so when you went to school to be a speech therapist, they taught you to be a speech therapist as best as you can. But they didn't teach you accounting skills. They didn't teach you managerial skills, right? No, no, they did not. So um, it's definitely something that you learn on the job. Um, I've always liked numbers. I've always liked math. Um, I enjoy that part of it because you, to be successful, you have to understand every single part of the therapy, um, well, every single part of the business. And I think that um, it helps me lead my team better. It helps me understand a full picture of what we're doing um, and of where we're going. And when I keep all of those like records up to date, Stephen does all of our long-term like projections and planning. And then, you know, as long as I'm keeping my data correct, like he can use that to do um, all the stuff that he needs to do for us. So a good manager will preach uh, work balance, right? Work-life balance. Um, how do you feel like your work-life balance is? <laughs> Is it, is it getting better? Do you feel comfortable with it or will you ever feel comfortable with it in this field? Um, so I think that we are both naturally workaholics. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think that we get that naturally if you know yeah. our parents at all. Yeah. Um, and that feels good to me. You know, a lot, I don't think there's a lot of people who could do what we do and put in the hours that we put in. Um, but you learn how to balance that. Like I said, we've got young kids and um, you try to make that a priority and try to make sure you're being present mm -hmm. in, in all of the, the, you know, the big stuff and, and just the little everyday life stuff. Um, but we both push what, 70 hours, 80 Probably. hours yeah. a week um, doing that. And, um, you know, it's balanced for me and a lot of other people don't understand that. And that's okay. It, it works for me and it works for our family. Um, I think, you know, Stephen and I were laughing this morning. He was like, Remember when you showed up to work three days after you had your second baby? No. <laughs> and one of our therapists was like, I don't think you should be here. And I was like, you just, you just go back to work. Don't worry about it. It all worked out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Stephen was, uh, his wife was having their, their latest child and he was doing some billing in the in hospital. In the hospital. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hospital room. Sure. I mean, you just learn to wait, make it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. She was, she was having her baby. Well, not during no, okay. the process. <laughs> I just want to clear that. Up. I didn't wait till afterwards. I, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, workaholics are one thing. They can get a little bit ridiculous now. Well, it's it's funny when I when I told Lynn, my wife, that uh, I was going to interview you too, she laughed, and the only question she could think of, uh, well, the, the, she said, "Hey, you need to ask them where they got their work ethic from." No, oh, and we sure. just laughed because Martin and Rita, yeah, you yeah. know, they put a few hours in in, in their sure. life as well. We and, and you know what? I know they're there for support, and, and, and your spouses are there for support as well, but, but they put in hours too. So so it's just tough to make it work, but, but it sounds like you both are comfortable in doing that, right? Yep. That, that's, that, that's terrific. All right, so I was just out at your place, Harvest Health and Rehab there, and uh, I mean, you've got construction going on on the inside, but the outside already looks great. So what in the world are you doing in regards to growing that particular building here in Ligoti? Well, we we're adding on so we're basically in the process of doubling the size of our, our gym and adding a couple more treatment rooms um, we're consistently basically running out of space currently and wanted to make sure that we uh, were able to grow um, and not hinder us because of the facility um, and we are invested there everybody knows where we're at and we think that this is you know going to be sufficient you know long term for for what our needs will be here in Lagodi. So it sounded like just by you telling me this that, that, that you considered maybe another site that that you might have to go that way, but you felt like you could make this work. Yeah, yeah, we did. We had you know invested enough in the facility that you know probably not going. It's it's hard to find people to come in and take that as well. Hmm. And so we we were looking, but uh, we decided to think it was best to stay there. And we we figured out you know with the architects that we could make it work. 
-hmm. And so, you know, we had been actually planning this for more than a year now, but just the, it takes a while to get started. Once we get started, you know, it's going pretty quick, but mm -hmm. we should be in there probably in the November, early December right now. I mean, all we've got left is paint and uh, flooring, ceiling, lights, pretty much. Okay. Especially yeah. for Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> Month away. All right. Um, but aside from Lagodia, at, at some point you said, uh, hey, th this is working. This is working. And in fact, it's working so well that we need to service another area. And you did that. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of those things we have learned. We learned really on that if you don't have the right people in your place, it's not going to work. So um, we kind of let God do the work in that aspect and that we let, you know, who falls in our lap. And um, we'd had this um, just amazing woman, Penny Clark, and she had been working for us on every Friday. So in the therapy world, most people work four tens and they have a day off. And it's not uncommon for therapists on that day off to work at another facility. Um, and she had been working with us um, one day a week for what, a year, year and a half? Yeah. Something um, and and she just when you when you meet this person like she has it you know she's got that spark she is an incredible therapist um, really well known in the Bedford community and um, we were talking um, after some work <laughs> <laughs> there's no trend <laughs> um, work life balance on occasion right, right. <laughs> and she said if you build me a building they will come. And she said, please build me something in Bedford. And so, um, I mean, really, Stephen and I talked and we thought, you know what, we could, we could really do this. Like we could really make this work. And so, um, what a month, two months later, like we started, started making plans to see like, okay, what can we do? Where can we put this? Like, you know, what would this look like there? Um, and we ended up renting a space there as well for what a year seven or eight months while we were building. So we we had purchased ground to build, but didn't want to wait for the new building. So we went ahead and tried to get an established patient load. So maybe three or four blocks down the street, we rented a smaller space uh, that happened to be open at the time. So we did that in, I think, uh, November of 2020. So kind of in the middle of COVID. Um, and then what, July, I think, July 4th weekend or something, mm -hmm. we moved into our new building in yeah. 2021 there. Yeah. So was the, did you feel like, so this was, this was Penny's idea, right? I mean, this, yeah. this is, hey, if you do it, but did you feel like, or did she feel like that Bedford was an underserved community in, in what you're doing? Yes. So there were some other um, options for therapy available in the community, um, not up to our standards, you know, and that's, that is kind of the whole idea behind HHR is that um, we provide excellent health care for rural communities, right? And we want that individualized, we want that personalized care. Um, and so we saw, you know, the, the other options were like, you know, we would just do some things differently and we feel like we could provide a different experience for our patients. Um, and it wasn't very long and that, that ball got rolling and, and patients were, were talking and word of mouth was spreading and we were getting more and more people, you know, um, coming from different areas, from other facilities, um, and it just kept growing. And um, they are, yeah, they're, they're full and, and, and happy and, and doing great, yeah. But again, you have to staff it and you have to get those people. So I would imagine the Bedford community, you've got Bedford, Bloomington, others to choose from, maybe a little bit easier to staff. It is a little bit easier, um, and because Penny is, um, she's not originally from there, but has lived there for a long time and, and knew some therapists and said, hey, listen, like, I think they would be a really good fit for us, right? I think that um, they, they would work out really well. So she already kind of had some ideas about who she would bring on board with her. So in the beginning, you rattled off all of the... Um, I guess all of the things that you do in regards to speech pathologist and everything, is is there something that you don't do that you think a service is needed that, that you're working on or, or do you feel like you have the bases covered right now? Um, I think probably the biggest thing um, that a lot of our patients have just mentioned to us is the for the like over 50 crowd. Um, I know up in ND they had some over 50 gyms where somebody would take their vitals 
um, show them some, like how to use some equipment in a gym and they would monitor their vitals like while they worked out. Um, if anything got off, they would contact their physician. Um, they had like a CNA in there to do that. And I think that would be such a cool idea for um, some communities to do is, you know, they don't want to go to a gym where people are, um, you know, benching 200 pounds and, and grunting, you know, they want to go to a place where they feel comfortable around people their age, where there would be someone to help explain like how to use equipment, um, to help monitor if they're like, I'm feeling kind of dizzy after I did that. Um, so I think, you know, that that's some feedback that we get from some of our older patients that they wish that they had a place to go to work out, um, where they felt more comfortable and to stay fit and healthy, especially in the winter months when they're can't get outside to walk. Yeah, well, you're talking to me. I tell you, that, <laughs> that sounds good. You open up a place like that. And that's uh, but yeah, yeah, for number one. But but it does lead me to a question um, because I came to Harvest Health a shoulder problem, but um, I'm trying to remember. Do do you need a referral when you come to you, or can you just come in and say, hey, here's my problem? I'm sure you can guide for them from there. But do does everybody need a referral at this point? No, um, which is kind of cool. So for OT and PT, for most commercial insurances, you don't need a referral. And you can come get services for 42 calendar days. If it goes past that, then you would need it. Um, for the federally funded insurances, so like your Medicare or your Medicaid, they are still requiring a physician order. So if somebody did come in and, uh, and, and had a, a problem like I had or what have you, mm -hmm. and just walked in mm -hmm. and said, hey, can you help me? Do I need to go anywhere else? Your answer is yes. Yeah. Let's get you scheduled. Yeah. Get you on the books. All right. So what's what's next? What's on the horizon? In fact, you just talked about a thought that you'd like to have, right? Oh, that's you a know. really neat. <laughs> <That's actually laughs> okay. Just maybe a need in the community. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, the, the idea of growing to Bedford came from somebody saying, please do this. I can do it. We need it. Uh, are you open to expanding to other communities? Yeah, we're we're looking at that now. I mean, it's it's got to be the right fit. I think you know, mm -hmm. make sure we find the right uh, right therapist, and you know, whether we look at you know growing it organically in a place that doesn't have those services now, or potentially acquiring a, another business that, that does the same thing that we do. That we're looking at that. You know, we're not we don't have anything on the books right now, but uh, you know, we're definitely open minded to it. You know, one of the questions I had was the, the challenges of opening a business in a small community, but it sounds like that's sort of an advantage to you, right? Because it may be more underserved. Yes. Actually, that's what I talk about all the time. Uh, the challenge is you have to be excellent at what you do because you have to maintain a high market share percentage of the people that need your services, and you have to get you know get the word out to everybody. But uh, if you do that, you've got a built-in you know, population that is going to need a certain percentage of those are going to need need uh, our care, and as long as we do a good job, we'll be able to do that. Um, you know, it was just tough early on getting started out, but at, after a few years, we were able to you know set the foundation, and I think we've got a playbook now that is is repeatable in in other areas. And and, and Aaron, the, the go ahead. Well, and I, I think the challenge too, like you know, we're not talking about opening a coffee shop. We're not talking about opening a restaurant or a clothing store where people want to go, right? When people go to those types of places, it's for pleasure. You're right. Nobody wants to go to a rehabilitation. Nobody there. wants to go there, right? Nobody was like. But they're glad they did. Yeah. I mean, nobody is like, oh, yes. Like, I've just been waiting to tear my rotator cuff, you know? <laughs> like, I've been waiting. Like, I'm so glad I got this knee replaced. Like, no parent is like, I've always wanted a nonverbal kid. You know, it's just, it's different. Nobody wants to be there. And I tell my team that all the time. I said, listen, when you get someone who comes in, fresh knee replacement, you know, uh, an elderly man, I said, they're coming in and yeah, they're going to be grouchy because they are hurting and pain meds. Let's just be honest. They make you constipated. So they're you're not feeling great. I'm like, and they're mad because they can't, they're not independent anymore. And they're having to depend on their spouse way more than they want to. And they're just mad because they didn't think it would hurt this bad. And they didn't think it would be this hard. Right. I'm like, and we, are there for their entire journey. I'm like, nobody wants to go to therapy, but my goal is when they come into our place, like I want to be like the Disney world of therapy. You know, if you have to go somewhere, I want us to be your pick. Um, you know, so, so many of our patients 
what they're going through. It, it's so much more than just, um, you know, something physical that we're helping them. Like it's emotional, it's spiritual. You know, we get patients in there. Um, a lot of doctors have kind of started doing some what they call like prehab, and that's when you get therapy prior to a surgery especially if you're a little bit older they you know the research is like if you are stronger going into a surgery you you recover better right you get better results um and we have so many people come in and they've, they've never had surgery right they've never and they are terrified and it's like you know we get to reassure them you know we get to hug them we get to pray with them um on bad days we'll cry with them you know we get to share the happy happy days the happy tears when they're doing something like miraculous and so um, I know you kind of mentioned like earlier, like the rewards, we get to see these rewards of our business. Like, yes, there is a lot that goes into it, but oh my gosh, like it is so rewarding. And every single day, you know, we get to be there the first time someone walks after a stroke, right? I get to be there for the first time a kid takes drinks from a bottle. You know, we get to be there. Um, the first time somebody comes in using their walker versus a wheelchair, right? Um, we get to be there when the athletes are finally ready to jump back in and play their first game again. So it's like those rewards are constant and they are daily. Um, Sometimes it's in the clinic and sometimes it's not, you know, sometimes it's seeing somebody in the grocery store and they go, Hey, look, I can, I can reach this off the top now, you know, cause they're recovering from a shoulder. And, and it's like the, the rewards are just, um, tenfold what we put, put into it. And I just don't think that you can really ask for anything more than that. The Disney world of therapy. <laughs> I like that. It's an interesting is it, one. Is that, a, is that a market? Is that a new slogan? And less expensive. By <laughs> way, for, for uh, we don't want to be the expensive part. But yeah. <laughs> and, and the good thing about this is, you know, when you go into Disney World, you feel great when you leave. Okay. But when, when you go like to your place, reverse. you don't feel great. But when you leave. You feel great, yeah. yeah. But no, I can't imagine th those rewards, not just for the individual being treated, but the families. You know, yeah. you had me tearing up there for a little bit. That's why I had to go into the Disney World thing, because, because when you think about the, the families and, uh, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, gosh, those grandchildren get to see their grandfather do this, play football with them again or something yeah. like that. And uh, that's got to be so rewarding. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there are sometimes, you know, sometimes it's like somebody's like, oh, I took my back last week. They might be and they're like three or four visits and out. Right. They're done. Graduate. Um, but if we have people who have um, like developmental disabilities, if they're born with something, I mean, you're talking maybe years of therapy and not just for the child, you know, to, to show up and be ready to perform. I mean, think about like, you know, as adults, we're like, oh, I need to work out, right? I need to, and we fall off the wagon pretty easily, right? <laughs> to maybe do it for a couple months and, and fall Assuming off. you get on the wagon. Assuming right. you get on the wagon. <laughs> I mean, these kids don't get to fall off the wagon. You know, they have to show up every single week and their parents show up for them every single week, week after week for years. You know, and, and I think um, something really cool about our clinic is sometimes you'll have, sometimes people will have like just pediatric clinics or just ortho. And because we're combined, um, I think it gives our adult patients some perspective. Um, and, and just for an example, we had a um, little girl who had had like multiple strokes at birth. And she's like 10 or 11, 12 right now. Um, so she's been in, in therapy her whole life, you know, hilarious. I had a, a guy in there, and I can't remember if it was like a knee replacement or something. And he was like kind of grumbling about his therapy a little bit. And she looks over at him and says, I don't know what you're complaining about. I've been doing this for years, you know? And he was like, oh, gosh. You know, but just like smack you over the head with perspective. And, it, you know, it, it's funny because he'll say like, um, I know you can't tell me who that is, but I want to be scheduled with her. <laughs> you know? and, and so I think, you know, they see like how hard some of our kiddos and, and what warriors they are. And so, you know, the bottom line is everyone's going through something hard. Everyone has their own heart, whether you can see it or not, whether you're coming to therapy for it or not. Like we've all got something hard going on. And that's why I try to tell my patients, this is just your heart. This is your hurdle, and that's what we're here to do: is help you, help you get over that. Yeah. Would you like to brag on your your staff a little bit, whether it's my name or just in general? But <laughs> but when I, when I think about going into a place like that, like you said, good, you, and it's going to hurt at times. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you don't need somebody in there that's grumpy too. So you've got to not only have the experts, but the right personality. 
and, and I know your group has that, but yeah. tell us a little bit about your staff. Oh my gosh, they are, I cannot even tell you how blessed we are to have the staff that we do. They are absolutely amazing. Not, not just people, because they're incredible people, which is always our top priority, right? Incredible, nice people. You know, we, we want people who are kind um, representing us, but man, are they talented and skilled and so knowledgeable. Um, and I tell them that all the time. I said, people aren't coming here for um, exercises or to see you. I said, they're coming here for your brain, you know, and they're just so smart. And um, I think, you know, Stephen and I, one thing about, you know, opening this business is not only to, to fill a need and to serve an, an under um, service population, but also to create jobs in a community. You know, we live in a really small community. Um, and a lot of times when you have people who go off to college and get degrees in specialized items, they're not coming back. Um, and part of that reason is because there's not jobs available to them to return to this area. Um, so that's something that Stephen and I think is so important is, you know, the second part of that is being able to provide job opportunities so people come back and keep pouring into our community. You know, so Lagodi stays strong. Um, and so it's, it's serving an underneath population, but also providing job opportunities so we can have our um, amazing people from Lagodi and surrounding counties that we love continue to um, move back and, and raise their families here and pour into the community and um, just help it keep thriving. So what's next? Any, anything uh, that you can share with us, any ideas, any thoughts uh, as to the vision as to what may be next? Well, I would think we don't have anything planned right now, but we are looking in surrounding, you know, communities uh, for opportunities to do something similar to what we're, we're providing here. Um, you know, when will that be? Will it be a couple months from now? Will it be two years? Who knows? But making sure we find the right fit, because if we find the right fit and find one or two really good therapists that we can build upon, uh -huh. We're confident we can build, you know, build out a successful uh, therapy clinic in pretty much any region. But we we want to stick to rural areas. You know, it's uh, <clears throat> kind of it's where our name came from, really. If you think Harvest Health, it's really yeah, this. Yeah. yeah, talk about that Harvest yeah. Health, the, the origin of. Yeah, so we because we wanted to provide healthcare services in rural communities. Harvest is really like farming, you know, right? right? <clears throat> and it's really about harvesting your health. So if you're out harvesting, that's where you're getting all the rewards for all your hard work. Well, this is, you come in, put in the work, and you get the reward of leaving a whole lot better than, than you came in. So that's kind of where Harvest Health came. So did you guys have like from. a round table discussion and on the board throw up all these names? Or how, how did, who, who came I was driving a truck, you were. driving home from yeah. work one day, we were talking, and uh, how did that come up? Elizabeth came yeah. up. Yeah, Elizabeth yeah. came up with that His name. Wife. Okay. So yeah, she had said something about it because we were just throwing all kinds of names. And didn't have anything good really. <laughs> we didn't want to say you know birch uh, <laughs> birch therapy. Birch therapy. Yeah. What, what, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, um, but it ended up uh, we liked the name and uh, yeah. it, it kind of stuck. It kind of fit with what we were trying to do. And didn't she name the car wash too? Didn't she come up with oh. bullseye? No, she did. No. No. He goes, I don't know. I can't remember. After a few maybe. Yeah. Who knows, right? I can't remember. You don't have to give credit. What credit is due if you don't know? Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, she's she's a backbone. I mean, you know, I yeah. I stay busy, and and she is uh, is all about supporting. She's actually a physical therapy assistant. Oh, so okay. so you know, she knows what we're doing. <laughs> she won't work for you. Yeah. <laughs> It's a little bit too far yet. One purchase done. Yeah, exactly. But no, she's she's great, and she yeah. uh, she understands what we're doing and, and the the work that goes into it. So she's very supportive. Anything we didn't talk about that you feel is important to get out there? Um, just anything at all. And, and it's always when you leave. Well, when I leave, I wish I would have. Been. So literally. Is there anything right now you can think of that we want to get out to people? Um, I mean, I would just say, you know, we've got an amazing staff. It's what's uh, helped us be able to grow like we have. And, you know, if you ever have any therapy needs, you know, um, talk to your friends and get their perspective. Because mm -hmm. I'd say you probably know somebody that's been in our clinics. And 
and you know if they've had good success give us a shot mm -hmm. yeah you know I, I just think and any successful business goes through this but from the beginning of our conversation when you guys just had the idea you know and okay what's next what's next the challenges and here you are now to a point to where you're continually looking at other areas you know i mean uh I, I think it's just an amazing story and i hope you continue to grow if you can you know in that regard but uh nonetheless it, it is it is just an unbelievable feeling knowing knowing that you have this skill set in Lagodi, indiana I, I mean ask your parents you know when they grew up it was bars maybe a bank and a restaurant <laughs> yeah. gas station you know and, and what we have now and continue to grow with your help is it is tremendous so so we thank you thank you for today for sure thanks aaron, for having us aaron birch burns and <laughs> and stephen it's hard to get used to it. always yeah my husband's like people are, aaron birch he's like they will never call you <laughs> i will always sounds be, the same. i will always be a birch <laughs> yeah. guys thanks a lot and congratulations thank you. all right thanks greg there's your dynamic duo right there and what's uh you know five years from now i'd be interested to come back and talk to them again and, and, and see see what's going on in their lives and in our communities. But Harvest Health and uh, Rehab in Lagodi and in Bedford. So now I hope you know a little bit more about your neighbor's business. Thank you for watching.